Hey there everyone, it's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I am currently in a hotel room in Glasgow, Scotland. And let me tell you, this is the most interesting little review that I've ever done. It's gonna be very speedy because, well, in case you're wondering what the hell my arm is doing, I am holding my own light because I botched it and didn't bring the little piece that attaches to the camera. And I, for the life of me, couldn't find anything else to use in order to have this camera, I mean, sorry, this light attached to the camera. So I had no choice but to have to carry my own light. So with that being said, let's get into Clash at the Castle. It has been a very um, eventful weekend, I would say. I thought Clash at the Castle went by so freaking fast. Like I sat down and I saw that there was still an hour left in the pre-show and I was like, what the hell is going on? So I left to go get pizza, came back. And then by the time that I sat down to watch the show right before it started, um, the show flew by. It was so freaking fast. Like I know we've been doing shorter pay-per-views now, but let me tell you, it just flew by being there in person. And it was like one second, Bailey and Piper were on and I'm thinking, oh shit, there's just one match left but god there's so much to say first of all I just want to say like I'm very happy to be here right now in Glasgow I've never been to Scotland before so this was such a cool opportunity to be here and I really wanted to do something different and present some different type of content here to the channel and usually obviously I mostly go to the shows in the states but because I saw an opportunity, I freaking took it. I'm like, all right, let's see how it goes. And honestly, I had a really great time. I do want to go ahead and say that I really thought that the, um, that the hospitality here in the UK was very nice. Everybody was so kind. Everybody in, that I met from locals to media member, everybody was just so warm and very, very welcoming. No one made me feel like an outsider or anything like that. So I do have to say that it was a very uh, nice experience on that end. And things just ran so much, like so smoothly. Nothing felt chaotic. It was just fun and easy and breezy <laughs> at that point. Easy, breezy, beautiful, cover girl. All right, sorry I had to. You say breezy and I'm in. <laughs> All right, so um, in terms of being at the show, the vibe was freaking cool. I was most excited about that because I wanted to know how the crowd was going to be. We've been seeing these international PLE shows and the crowds have been phenomenal. So to be able to experience that was very cool. Of course, there was a lot of chants that were taking place, some of which I was able to pick up on. Some of them were very easy, like Cody, Cody Rhodes. That was very, very easy. Uh, there was AJ Styles, you're a wanker, you're a wanker. And I mean, there were so many other ones. I can't remember them right now, but there was some that I did struggle and I was like, what are they saying? But at some point I figured it all out. It was very, very cool just to kind of see what was different, what was the same and stuff like that. So also, let's just get right into the show. So we opened up with the I Quit match, Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles. I was very surprised that that match was opening the show because personally, I kind of felt like that was a match that could have easily gotten the crowd tired. And thankfully, it did not. The crowd was not only really interested in this match, but they were digging absolutely everything because, of course, they know that this is something that they don't get very often. And so... <laughs> And so the fans were really just like invested in it. But with that being said, the match itself I thought was really good. I, I liked that they fought in the back. I liked that they fought in the ring. I loved the Cody Cody Rhodes chants and the AJ chants. It really just kept the energy up the entire time. We saw Cody Rhodes get busted open. He's got some cherry red blood. Uh, three crossroads to him. I mean, there was just a lot that happened and I'm trying to remember everything. I don't have my notes with me. Um, so well, I didn't take any notes to be honest, but uh, I just thought that the entire match that was fun and I liked that it had, uh, to me, it had to be gritty, right? They had to fight. They had to get ugly. It had to get messy. And I liked that that's what they did. Um, I did not like the finish to this match and that's just going to be me being very honest. I felt that the finish to the match was just super lame. I really did because it was really just Cody taunting AJ who's being handcuffed and he's got the steel steps and he 
taunts them and AJ's like, I quit, I quit. And I'm like, oh, that's it. And I wasn't even ready. I was trying to film all the finishes to every match. And I wasn't even ready for that because I wasn't expecting that to be the finish. I just kind of felt like the finish fell flat and did not match the execution of the match. And so I was not a fan of the finish of this match. And I did like that we saw Cody Rhodes' mom there. I actually, oh, and she was smacking AJ. I thought that was really funny. I actually thought that at some point AJ Styles was going to try to get his hands on Cody's mom and I thought that was going to lead to Cody possibly quitting. Of course, I was not expecting Cody to lose, but again, I think I was just expecting more of a fireworks type of ending. But I think we did kind of get some fireworks afterwards because we saw a confrontation with Solo Sokoa confronting Cody Rhodes and when the bloodline looks like they were going to attack Cody and all of that went down, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton came out and had his back and I know a lot of people have been wondering, "Hey, when are we going to see Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton? That's something we've been waiting waiting for so um that was cool and I think that just the crowd getting to see Randy and KO and the bloodline I think it kind of added to just you know a little bit more fun and I um yeah because it was weird too that the bloodline wasn't even on the card so it felt like we almost didn't have anything of the bloodline which was just weird and odd so this sort of all worked itself out very nicely but that was my quick thoughts on this match moving on to the next one so the next one was the triple threat match, and it was for the women's tag team titles, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn versus Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark versus Bianca and Jade, the tag, the former tag team champion. So I went into this match fully expecting for Bianca and Jade to retain. And the reason I say that is because they have been a pretty, like I thought they were supposed to be a dominant tag team, right? I thought they were going to book them to the moon, push them to the moon, right? Not let them fumble at all. I was picturing them like female tag team Gunther, just very, very strong in their uh, in their portrayal as champions, right? That's what I was truly expecting. So I wasn't expecting their reign to just end. And I also felt like neither Zoe and Shayna nor Isla and Alba had had enough of a push on the show to make me think that they could become champions, either team. And this is the one thing that I do wish that WWE did with the women tag team division where if there is going to be a team that is going to dethrone these champions especially these champions that are presented in such a strong fashion I want there to be a, a, a almost like a reason like a reason in terms of before the event right because we know the reason right it was Scotland they were here of course you were going to give them like a happy ending which was really cool very very nice moment but I really wish that they would have booked Alba and Isla a lot stronger heading into the show so that I could be like oh hey maybe they do have a chance and same thing for Shayna and Zoe so that was my only thing because I think you should put some respect on the women's tag team division and by putting respect I mean you gotta push these teams and actually make them look freaking good and the way to do that is on the weekly television not just like sporadically on the pay-per-view so very happy for Alba and Isla this moment for them, though, was really freaking cool. And you can tell how happy they were. And you can tell how surprised and just uh, hopeful they are of it. So I'm very happy for them that they were able to get this opportunity. But again, book that women's division a lot stronger heading into the pay-per-views. Next up, we had Sami Zayn and Chad Gable for the Intercontinental Championship. And this was one that I thought we were going to get, like, these really big um, turn, I guess, from Otis. And I really feel like the there wasn't like an official, how do I say this? I, I think I was expecting for Otis to like smack Chad Gable, punch him in the face, something more direct like that versus he basically just was fed up with him and then carried Maxine out when she took a, uh, an unfortunate bump off of the freaking uh, ring apron. And she was actually, she took two bumps. No, she almost took two bumps. Sorry. It was the one from the ring apron, which was almost going to be a bump from the Haluva kick, but then the, from Sami Zayn. But the one that ended up taking her out was the one on the outside from Chad Gable. So of course, Otis was freaking pissed off of that. And he decided, Decided not to stay there and help Chad Gable and instead decided to take Maxine to the back to get some help. So 
that was basically the big moment where they kind of left Chad Gable on his own and Sami Zayn was able to retain uh, his Intercontinental Championship. So again, I kind of wished it was a little bit more of a strong, holy shit, Otis absolutely just turned on Chad Gable type of thing. I really would have liked him for him to sucker punch him or just something like that. I think just would have been a little bit more like, oh, oh shit, this happened. And I think that's what the people were expecting. But overall, still a fun story and a fun hell hell of a fucking oh oops sorry I didn't mean to curse wait I always curse sorry it's super late guys I'm trying to remember everything right now <laughs> there's been a lot happening um and where was I at with this yeah so the match itself I definitely loved the match it was freaking good I love freaking Sammy and Chad Gable so much they just know what the hell they're doing man moon salts I mean everything that went down in this match was very freaking cool so shout out to both guys <laughs> next up we had the WWE Women's Championship match Bailey versus Piper Niven and this was one that um I actually kind of felt like the crowd if they were tired in any match it was kind of this one I was expecting bigger reactions for both Piper and Bailey so that did kind of surprise me but I think once the match started people got more into it but I think at that point people were primarily either waiting to see some sort of surprise with Piper Niven winning at some point I think the crowd was really starting to buy that Piper was actually going to win uh, I noticed that the crowd did bite into a couple of the moments where it looked like Piper had it I had no point thought that Piper was actually going to win so I didn't necessarily bite into those moments but the crowd did um give into this whole match a whole lot by the end of it the crowd was pretty interested but I think that yeah I felt like in the beginning though I really did sort of feel like the crowd was just waiting for the main event at this point point. and then when the finish happened I did kind of think that the the, the reaction wasn't as huge, again, because I think people were kind of anticipating that perhaps there would be a surprise uh, title changing hands here, but that wasn't the case. So uh, there you go. Moving on to the next match. The next match was for the World Heavyweight Championship, Damian Priest versus Drew McIntyre. This was my favorite match of the night. I thought this match was incredible. High intensity, getting to be there for Drew McIntyre's entrance in Scotland was insane. And um, damn, the band performing at the beginning with the bagpipes, all of that. Uh, the moment where he had the Scottish flag. Uh, I'm trying to remember everything. Oh my God, there was just, it was very, very freaking cool the way that that the crowd was chanting for him like the electricity was definitely high it was what I was expecting from a Drew McIntyre Scotland entrance at Clash at the Castle um and so let me think what else oh yeah all right all right sorry guys it's almost what time is it it's 2 4 a.m right now and I've been uploading so much content so my mind is kind of all over the place and so there was one scary moment where Damien Priest looked like he was going to the outside and unfortunately his freaking foot, his ankle got stuck in between the ropes, right? And there was a moment where like Drew was trying to stall for time and the referee was trying to like take out Damien Priest's leg and he's just hanging there upside down and um he's not able to and then finally like the crowd and Drew and everybody's like okay like everybody knows this is not part of the match this is not part of the show we just have to work for it and at some point Drew tries to help out Damian Priest but he can't and then eventually he kind of starts hitting him and punching him and by pulling his body up while he's punching him he's able to get him out of the rope so uh, Drew McIntyre was super chill man super chill during all of this he was like no big deal we got this um, it was actually kind of uh, intense Tense, I felt like being there in the crowd I was like oh my god like this the referee was really struggling to get Damian Priest freaking up but eventually Drew was able to get him out of there but this match was so freaking great I knew the second I mean going into it I already knew CM Punk was gonna cost him the match like let's be real the signs were all there but there was a moment where uh Drew McIntyre got the visual pin on Damian Priest and once you see that you're like oh boy he really ain't gonna win so uh, they have a ref bump the referee he gets thrown out that's when Drew gets the visual pin but then eventually CM Punk runs in in a referee t-shirt and he low blows Drew McIntyre and this then he gets out of the ring and this allowed Damian Priest to hit his finisher he hits his finisher referee comes in and he's like oh and he counts the one two three and there you go uh, Damian Priest retains and Drew McIntyre is screwed once again by CM Punk and the crowd is chanting 
2019. So much freaking bullshit. I felt so bad for Samantha Irving because they sent her out there to be like, thank you so much, everybody, for coming to Clash of the Castle. And we know that's not the ending you wanted, but thank you so much for being here. And I was like, damn, someone give Samantha Irving her flowers because she went out there to a mad, mad crowd. But it's also really funny, too, because the most shirts that I saw in Scotland were all CM Punk shirts. I saw more CM Punk shirts than Drew McIntyre shirts. It was crazy. The top shirts that I saw were Cody Rhodes, CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, Jey Uso, a lot of Yeet shirts, and then the Scotland 316 shirts, and then the generic Clash at the Castle t-shirts. Those were the main ones that I kept seeing, but so many CM Punk fans in Scotland. But of course, even if they were CM Punk fans, they were, uh, you know, still rooting for Drew McIntyre, of course. So that was freaking sick. And then we finally had the press conference. The press conference was really cool. Uh, very, very simple, very easy. There were some cool items that were said. Uh, Alba and Isla kicked it off and they were talking about being champions. Then we had Damien Priest. Damien Priest talks about, he said he was fine. He said he wasn't hurt from that spot. And he, you know, very, very in character. So uh, that one was more so in character. And then we also had a surprise from CM Punk. And that one was huge because, damn, the last time I was at a CM Punk press conference, it was the infamous CM Punk press conference. You guys know which one I'm talking about. You can find it here on the channel. And so CM Punk does his bit. He's going at it with a reporter, which is very, very funny. Uh, of course, it's playful because uh, the reporter had a whole booking idea about CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre being inside of a Hell in a Cell for the very first match. And CM Punk wasn't having any of that. And he's bringing out, he has donuts. That's his gimmick, as we all know, the infamous muffins. This time he had donuts. Uh, uh, I got to ask one question and I asked Tim basically about any surprises since he's came back. What has it been being back in WWE given the history with him and the company? And he gave a really great answer that then later on inspired another a conversation from Triple H because Triple H overheard that question and answer from CM Punk. So he kind of spoke about his relationship with CM Punk and the presser and talked about how CM Punk has changed and how he's also changed, um, you know, some of what is how things are handled backstage. So he spoke about that uh, in depth as well. Um, really good stuff. I would suggest checking that out. I've clipped that out all here on the channel. So overall, a good show. Um, I think I, I liked a lot of what went down. I liked a lot of what it, it means moving forward for Raw and for SmackDown. So, guys, I'm really sorry for this, like, quick review, but this is just a quick one. I hope you guys enjoyed just, like, overall thoughts. Um, and I will elaborate more on the live streams at a normal hour <laughs> and not when I'm holding up this light. If this is your first video that you're watching of mine, I swear to God, my production is not always like this. It's usually a lot better, so please forgive me. Um, but thank you guys so much. Please do not forget to check out the Clash at the Castle content here on the YouTube channel and click that subscribe button um, for so much more progress content. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye everyone.